We're back. You know how many times I filmed this video? So many times. Why? Because it's so hard to capture these cards on camera. I don't know what it is. The case is freaking reflective. The topplers are reflective. The cards are reflective. So everything just makes it so freaking difficult. But anyway, I'm here. We're doing this again. The next art box series that I'm going to show you is called Heroes and Villains. And this is my favorite series ever of all the art box ones. Why? Because they're color coded, they're organized. They're just great, man. I don't even have the base set for them. I don't even have the rare or the foil cards for them. I just have the prop cards, the costume cards, and the autograph cards. So, without further ado, let's look at the prop cards first. I went and got more lighting. So you can actually see these cards. The first card I'm going to show you is from Half-Blood Prince. Most of my cards in this series are from Half-Blood Prince. Heroes and Villains was released in 2010, so before Deathly Hallows Part 2 came out. So that covers the first seven movies. Now, I don't have a card from every single movie, but that's okay. So, Candles from Hagrid's Hut, number 140, I have 230. There it is. You can see Hagrid. It's a bit dark, it's not even that you can't see, it's just a very dark card. Um, all prop cards are blue, and then on the back, they say P2 on the back of them. Mystery Munchies Coffee Cups, number 129 out of 160. So these are the coffee cups right there, the Ministry of Magic. All prop cards have the Death Eater mask on the back of them to also distinguish. Then we have one that's a little bit hard to see. This is the Motor and Pestle, number 48 out of 150. It's used in potions. Now this was broken up, but there it is, see? Little pieces of that. And they broke it up and put it in here. So, you can shake it. All these numbers are very low too, like 150, 160, 230. They didn't make a whole lot of them in this series. The next card is a framed picture from the borrow, and this is number 58 out of 120. So it's just parchment. There's nothing fancy about it. Unfortunately, it doesn't feature any of the bugs or whatever. There it is. In the back. The next one is also half blood prints, and this is Bottles from Hagrid's Hut. So this is a scene where Harry, Slughorn, and Hagrid are drinking and getting piss ass drunk after Aragog's funeral. So here are the bottles. They are now broken up into little tiny pieces. But there's the bottle there. This is number two out of 210. So again, all these cards are really low numbers. And then to go along with the bottles, we have Slughorn's Cup from Hagrid's Hut. And this is number 69 out of 170. So there it is. There's the cup. Again, it was broken up to fit inside the card. These cards are relatively thick. And my personal favorite that I have is from Chamber of Secrets, and it is Defense Against the Dark Arts Second Year Essential Knowledge Test. Now you're probably thinking, what on earth does that mean? Well, you will not see this scene if you pop in a DVD and you press play. It is pretty hard to find unless you go on YouTube or, you know, you have the extended version or deleted scenes. But this is the part where Harry, Ron, Hermione, and the fellow second years are taking an exam in Gilderoy Lockhart's very first class. And the questions are, what is Gilderoy Lockhart's favorite color? What is Gilderoy Lockhart's favorite ambition? So this card is number 17 out of 200. And look at this. It says what? <laughs> So this is part of the, qu the questionnaire. It is, what is Gilder Lockett's favorite color? So there it is. Those are one of the what's. And there's the scene, Harry and Ron are looking at their exam going, what the F is this? And there it is. There's the back of it. So those are all my prop cards that say P on the back of them. But I have this very special prop card. Um, it is a case incentive. So, what does that mean when it's a case incentive? It means it came in the case of boxes. So you cannot find this card in a pack or in a box. You had to buy a case full of boxes of cards in order to get this one card. So it's pretty rare. Case incentive could also be like a costume card or anything like that. It's not exclusive to just a prop card. However, 
This one is Case Incentive 4. It is number 76 out of 92. It is Slughorn's Christmas Party Chicken Foot Goblet Base. Yes, you heard that correctly. It's a chicken foot. So there's the base of the goblet. That's the goblet right there. You see the little chicken foot of the goblet where they're at the party for Slughorns? It's a very thick card. It's kind of heavy, not really, but you know, it's thicker than normal. But there it is. It's number 76 out of 92, like I said. And again, it's blue, representing prop. Cool, I know. Moving right along to the costume cards, we have a few, not many. The very first one is the late Helena McCrory. She played Narcissa Malfoy. This is number 326 out of 430. So if you'll remember, the actress died in the last couple of years. This is from Half-Blood Prince. The back of the card is slightly different than the prop cards. You see the castle. It says C on it for costume. So this card specifically is C4 in the series. So we have another one. This one's called the Slytherin Quidditch Costumes in the film High Pond and Half-Blood Prince. Number 166 out of 480. So there is the material. As you can see, it's green now. So both costume cards are green. That's like I said, they are color coded. And next we have a double costume card. So the back of the card says DC on it, double costume. So one of them that I have is a double costume card of David Tennant and Patia Bejalik, I wanna say, which played the roles of Barty Crash Jr. and Igor Karkaroff in the film Hypona Gobble of Fire. Now this one is number 40 out of 160. So there it is. It's a pretty sweet card, I think. Who doesn't love David Tennant? As you can see right down here, it says DC. Then we have another one of a DC card. This is DC 3, 134 out of 180. And this card contains authentic Death Eater and Azkaban prisoner costume material from the film Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. So there it is. And there's the back. When Heroes and Villains was released, it was also released around the same time as San Diego Comic Con. Now if you know, San Diego Comic Con always has exclusives with Artbox, all the time. So in 2010, Heroes and Villains released of some exclusive cards that were only obtainable at San Diego Comic Con. So the very first one is a purple costume card of Luna Lovegood played by Ivana Lynch in Order of the Phoenix. Now this is number 7 out of 550. Now you can tell it's San Diego Comic Con because if you look at the back it says SDCC 10 HV1. So that stands for San Diego Comic Con 2010 Heroes and Villains 1. So there are three in this series. This is one, Luna Lovegood. The second one in the series is Imelda Staunton, who played Umbridge. This is number 254 out of 550. Take a look at that, it's pretty sweet. And you can see it says HV2 on it. Then we also have the third one in the series, which is Matthew Lewis, aka Neville Longbottom. And there's his jacket from Or the Phoenix. And this is number 403 out of 550. And on the back of it, it says 3, HV3. So all three of them are a little different colors than the usual costume card. But like I said, this was San Diego, so they made them a little different. Now lastly, I do have two autograph cards. So the first one, which was also only obtainable in San Diego Comic Con in 2010 because it's in blue. So all of the autograph cards that were from San Diego Comic Con are in blue and all the regular ones are in red. Like I said, all the cards are color coded. So red was autograph, blue was prop card, and green was costume card unless they were some type of exclusive. Here is the very first one. Matthew Lewis as Neville Longbottom and this is a San Diego Comic Con exclusive because it's blue. Now it doesn't say San Diego Comic Con on the back of them, but all you gotta do is research and it'll tell you that it is in fact from San Diego Comic Con. Now these are really great because these are authentic. These are straight from Warner Brothers themselves. It's very hard to find officially licensed autograph of items these days, especially straight from the movies, you know? It's pretty sweet like that. And the last one, which is my personal favorite, I really need to replace the case for it because it's all scratched up. It's the original one they got in the mail. Boom. Take a look at that. 
So Rupert Grint, aka Ron Weasley, one of the main trios. This is red, so it's just a normal card. That's a comparison. There's your blue, there's your red. So, so that is my Heroes and Villains series. But stay tuned, there's more. So back in 2006, Artbox also released a series called the Poster Series. Now, mine's factory sealed. Here it is, in all of its glory. Um, it says that it is number 476 out of 1100, so it's specifically numbered. I am never opening this because mine is a uh, factory shield and it's pretty cool. However, they made another edition for San Diego Comic Con, which I own and it's open. So let me just read you the description of it because I find it a bit weird. So they're three and a half by five oversized cards and they show all the English language posters produced to advertise the first four Harry Potter films. The premiere edition features 38 silver foil border cards and is packaged in a deluxe green foil stamp box numbered to 1100 copies. Enclosed is a redemption card for four of the gold standard coin cards plus a special bonus card. The gold foil versions are exclusive to San Diego Comic Con and feature 38 gold foil border cards limited to 200 copies in a plain white unnumbered box. Both versions include four additional gold border cards numbered 1 through 4 just with the first four regular cards in the SDCC set. For some reason, this isn't green, so I don't, I'm a bit confused as to what the description means on, you know, with, this is black, this is very clearly black, it is not green whatsoever. I have opened up one, because I've sold one before that was already opened and it was basically the same, just, you know, silver. So, I guess maybe it's just an error on this website saying it's green, or maybe some of them were actually green, but this one is black, so who the hell knows? I don't. But let's look at this San Diego Comic Con one. So, I don't have the gold coins, unfortunately. I have the blank box. This is, this is literally what it came in. And then I do have the cards, which I think are really great. So like I said, they are oversized. Check that out. That's what it looks like. So this is the back. This is one. And it says, Dobby on the back of it for Chamber of Secrets. It's in green. Now they are color coded, so I like it. This is Prisoner of Azkaban. You get Dumbledore and you get McGonagall poster. It's purplish. And the last one is a Goblet of Fire poster. And it's like a reddish orange. We have the Sorcerer Stone posters. But look how cool it is on the back of them. Look how cool. So that is what you see on the back of them. Now these are really, these are all posters that you can find anywhere, right? We have Chamber of Secrets. We had some character posters. Freaking love that one. That's too funny. See? And then look at the back of that. And green. This is Chamber of Secrets. Now we have Prisoner of Azkaban. And as the movies went on, they made a lot more posters. Look at all these posters. I mean, they have a Stan, Sean Pike, and Ernie poster, and that's amazing. They have this really sketchy looking poster of the trio. They even had a Monster Book of Monsters one under the bed. Ah, oh, that was fun. Now the back of it is pretty cool too. I think that's a great design also. It's Harry, Hermione, and Dementor with the Time Turner, and then Hogwarts in the background. We also have a Goblet of Fire. Now there's a lot of Goblet of Fire posters. I mean, you got Fleur, you got Harry, flying, there's so many things going on here. But then the back of it is just like the movie poster. So you got Harry, Ron and Hermione, Fleur, Cedric, and Victor Crumb. And it says Goblet of Fire, and it's in red. So like I said, I don't have the gold coins for this. But I do have, you know, I do have the San Diego Comic Con edition, so here they all are. Like I said, they're pretty big. They're three and a half by five inches. So you wouldn't be able to put these in a normal card binder. But yeah, there's the two of them. And then, Artbox made a literary collector's card set. Now this is factory sealed. It's pretty hard to find it, so I also will never be opening this unless I get another factory sealed one. 
Now this series features all of Mary Grand Prey's artwork. Now if you don't know who Mary Grand Prey is, she illustrated the original Harry Potter American book covers. So 1 through 7 and then some of Fantastic Beasts, Quidditch Through the Ages. She also illustrated the original ones for those two that came out in 2001. So here's the description by Artbox. It says, Harry Potter Literary Collector's Card Set. This beautiful collector's card set includes 45 trading cards based on the literary works of J.K. Rowling's first five Harry Potter novels and inspired pastels of illustrating Mary Grand Prey. So, like I said, it features Mary's artwork. I have a couple prints of hers. I actually have three. I have shown them off on my Instagram before, so, you know, go check out my Instagram for more images. But this is another factory sealed box that I will never be opening. One of the last things I'm going to show you comes from Seen It. Second edition. So you guys know the scene. It was a huge thing back in like 2007, I want to say. Well, the second edition we had four art box cards that came with it, just for show and tell, for shits and giggles. So here's a close up of them. There's nothing special about them, really. Honestly, they probably already exist in the base sets, but the backs are a little bit different. Now, one other thing that they did was they released some art box cards exclusive to a limited edition DVD collection. So the Hogwarts trunk. So this is the Hogwarts holiday trunk. And I will do an unboxing video on this, so stay tuned. So this on the back of it shows you exactly what's in this box set. And at the very bottom of it says 16 new collectible trading cards, which is true. Now for some reason, I have two sets of these. I don't know how I have two sets of these. I have them sealed in this trunk. But I also have them in my binder. So I'm going to show you them. They're pretty normal. They they do match the art box cards. So the original Sorcerer's Stone ones were purple. Chamber of Secrets is green. Prisoner of Azkaban was blue. And Goblet of Fire was red. Now it only covers the first four movies. Nothing special again. They're just based on magical creatures and defense against the dark arts teachers and some character cards. So I will show you some close-ups right now. So that is all of my art box cards that I have. I have no other art box cards unless I buy one, which you know, I'm a Potterholic, so it's what I do. But I haven't bought a new art box card in like six months plus, maybe more at this point, maybe almost a year now. Wow, I'm getting good at restraining myself. Anyway, let me know in the comments below which series you like the most. And this can include all the other art box cards that I've shown you, from like you know, Sorcerer's Stone to World of Harry Potter, Got the Fire, blah, blah blah blah, whatever your favorite one. Let me know. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, that'd be cool. And I will see you guys next time.